guys welcome back to another one if you were new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the new 2021 nissan altima courtesy of hanover nissan in hanover pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so wanted to hop in this one today this car has actually been in production since 1992 so it has certainly been around for quite a while now not only that believe it or not well above average reliability rating by consumer reports which is the very highest rating that you can get when it comes to reliability at least so that is pretty darn cool also available all-wheel drive not every sedan out there these days has that like for instance the honda core doesn't have it, the hyundai sonata doesn't have it so the fact that you can get all-wheel drive on the altima is pretty darn cool as well and of course i will be testing out everything from acceleration braking handling sound system exhaust clip all of that stuff in this video today so having said all that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2021 nissan altima first one being the s starting at twenty four thousand three hundred dollars sv for twenty five thousand four hundred sr for twenty six thousand two hundred dollars sl which is the one we have today starting at twenty nine thousand nine hundred ninety dollars srvc turbo for thirty thousand six hundred and fifty and lastly the platinum starting at thirty four thousand one hundred dollars and so as you can imagine that one trim level where i emphasize turbo there are actually two different engine configurations so the first one is going to belong to all of the trim levels minus that vc turbo trim this one is going to be a 2.5 liter direct injected inline four cylinder putting out 188 horsepower at 6,000 rpm for the front wheel drive 182 horsepower actually for the all-wheel drives a slight power loss there not really a whole lot though 180 pound feet of torque at 3600 rpm for the front wheel drive 178 pound feet of torque for the all-wheel drive of course power sent to front wheels or all wheels through a cvt with paddle shifters with the sr trim level only that's how you're going to go ahead and get those paddle shifters but all in all zero to 60 time comes in at approximately 7.4 seconds we're going to give that a go later in this video with mpg numbers coming in at 28 in the city 39 highway for the front wheel drive configuration 26 city 36 on the highway for the all-wheel drive we actually do have the all-wheel drive today which is pretty darn cool because we just got snow last week here in pennsylvania so gotta love it but either way taking regular unleaded fuel so you get to save a little bit of money there at the pump as well but so then like i said there is one other engine configuration this one belonging to that srvc turbo trim level that one is going to be a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder putting out 248 horsepower 5600 rpm 273 pound feet of torque available at 4000 rpm sent to the front wheels through a cvt with paddle shift zero to 60 time for that one comes in at 5.9 seconds which is pretty much right on par for the course when you compare it to the competition for example Accord Touring comes in at 5.6 the Camry TRD I know comes in at 5.8 so it's pretty much on par for the course not a whole lot of a difference there MPG numbers for that engine configuration come in at 25 city 34 on the highway again it's as expected for that engine and so when it comes to the fuel requirements regular is actually required however for those power numbers I just rambled off premium is recommended so of course you can fill it up with regular unleaded it's not going to harm the ultima at all but you are going to see a slight power decrease when you do that so just wanted to mention that but do want to also mention there is a ds or drive sport mode for that engine configuration that essentially gives you full manual shift mode for the paddle shifters by the way to put it in that sport driving mode there's actually a hidden button that is a horizontal line on the shifter there just simply press that that is going to put it in that ds driving mode so have a little better acceleration there adjust the throttle response and the shift points essentially so although we don't have the paddle shifters here today we do have that all-wheel drive 2.5 liter engine configuration so having said that what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway here on the back roads in pa and let's give this one a shot let's see how quickly we can get this new 2021 nissan altima here up to speed all right so before we do this you guys the roads are a little bit slippery right now we did get a little bit of rain last night there's still puddles all over everywhere and having said that let me pull out onto the road here this is a somewhat of a straightaway i guess but from a standstill in three two one no slipping whatsoever i absolutely love that but 
little bit slow from the get-go there not the quickest acceleration in the world but it's pretty much as expected for a car like uh like the Altima with that engine configuration at least but not the quickest thing in the world but I absolutely love there was no slipping whatsoever even with the competitors if you really try to gun it putting power to the front wheels like that you are going to get some slippage but with an all-wheel drive system like the Altima has there was nothing that was absolutely amazing when it comes to zero slippage on that acceleration I will say that but anyways to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important so up front you will find 11.7 inch ventilated front discs in the back 11.5 inch solid rear discs as far as that 60 to 0 stopping distance goes it comes in at 116 feet which is certainly respectable a lot of sedans come in at the 120 some even at 130 feet so 116 is plenty fine there and as far as that braking feel goes it's maybe a little bit on the softer side but the number says it all certainly no issues with bringing the Altima to a stop so absolutely love that touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get an independent strut type front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension twin tube gas pressurized shock absorbers as expected front and rear stabilizer bars and if you were to go with one of the sr trim levels you're actually going to get a sport tuned suspension so you can expect a little bit firmer of a ride quality however a little better handling on the back road so that's really the trade-off i guess with that one but overall when it comes to ride quality in our sl trim level we have here today at least it's been perfectly fine so certainly no issues with the ultima not soaking up pennsylvania's road of perfections or anything like that it's not the very best ride quality like luxury like but it's pretty much as expected so i got no issues with it when it comes to this steering field it definitely leans a little bit more towards the heavier side which is a good thing it's better helps point you in the direction that you want to go and i was kind of looking for that quite honestly because the uh ultima doesn't have any driving modes to really adjust that steering sensitivity so i would hope that is a little bit on that heavier side so it works perfectly fine for me i actually do enjoy the steering feel in this one when it comes to cabin noise let's go ahead and get up to 50 miles per hour that's usually the number i look for not a whole lot of exterior wind noise coming into the cabin so i do like that as well i've certainly heard worse so cabin noise is right on par for the course once again that's actually due in part because if you were to go with the sl or platinum trim levels you're actually going to get acoustic laminated glass which is really going to deaden a lot of that exterior your wind noise coming into the cabin so only those two trim levels are going to give you that so we did want to emphasize that so if you wanted a more serene cabin go with one of those two trim levels that touching on visibility i can see perfectly fine out the back usually with cars like this you will have absolutely no issues whatsoever when it comes to visibility so definitely on point there as well but that about rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2021 nissan altima all right so here she is you guys the new 2021 nissan altima finished in super black in case anybody was curious of the color name let's go ahead and start up front on this one here active grille shutters will come standard across the board for all trim levels adjusting based upon the engine cooling that is needed at any given time to the sides halogen headlights will come with the s trim level however every single other trim level of the altima will actually give you led projector headlights that of course is what you guys are looking at right now so a little better illumination at night if you don't go with that s trim level at least they will of course come with led daytime running lights either way you're still going to get the automatic feature as well meaning when it starts to get dark out at night those headlights will turn on automatically for you then looking down towards the bottom we actually do have the led fog lights they will come on the sl trim level and platinum trims only every other trim level will not get those led fog lights so when they mention that and of course front and center you will get a chrome v motion front grille for the non sr trim levels however if you were to go with one of those sr trim levels that will get changed to a dark chrome finish in case you guys were curious of the differences there but let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of the Altima here and so since we are around the side of this one chrome belt line molding will come standard on this one body color door handles coming with the SR trim levels however they will get swapped out for chrome door handles for every single other trim level that is not an SR so it's kind of interesting there 
black side mirrors coming with the SR trims, body colored side mirrors for all other trim levels. And of course, when it comes to those side mirrors, they are power adjustable across the board, but they will be heated if you were to go with the SL VC turbo or platinum trims. And those setups also come with LED integrated turn signals as well. Therefore, that of course is what you guys are looking at right now. Taking a look then down at the wheel setup, 16 inch steel wheels with covers coming with the S, 17 inch aluminum alloys coming with the S, V and SL, and 19 inch aluminum alloys coming with the SR, VC turbo and platinum trim levels. So that about rounds out the side. Let's go ahead and make our way to the back now of the Altima. And so now since we are around back, when it comes to the rear spoiler, that is going to be an option. You can get it. However, it doesn't come standard on any particular trim level. So I wanted to mention that. But also in case you were curious walking around a dealer's lot, trim level badging will come standard across the board. So you guys can see that in the upper portion on the passenger side of that trunk there. Charcoal rear diffuser coming with the SR trim level looking down below. However, for all other trim levels, you're actually going to get a body colored rear diffuser. And it's hard to see now, I guess, because we have a black exterior, but it is down there. Trust me on that one. But either way, dual exhaust outlets will come standard. You will get chrome tips on the SR trim level and up. So therefore, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. So, but now since we are around back of the Altima, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, there is a button on the key fob. That is one way to go ahead and open it. There is also, of course, a button on the trunk itself. That is yet another way. And lastly, there is a button by the driver's side left knee as well. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 15.4 cubic feet, which is a very respectable amount back there. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space then if you needed it. Also within that cargo area, you do have cargo lighting back there, and there is a very tiny amount of in-floor storage if you were to lift up that cargo floor then as well. But then, making our way to the rear legroom of the Altima, that comes in at 35.2 inches. So, I'll give you a for reference here. I am an even six feet tall. This is how much space I had in the back of the Altima here, sitting behind my own driving position. Did not adjust any of the front seats here. Rear ventilation is going to come standard on the SL trim level and the platinum trims. That's how you're going to go ahead and get that. You will get rear center armrests with cup holders back there. There are some front seat back map pockets as well. And as far as the charging ports go you will get a usb charger and a phone charger as well back there so that is definitely convenient but now let's go ahead and make our way to the front seats of the altima eight-way power driver seat actually coming standard for every single trim level you don't always get that with sedans a lot of times it's manually adjustable on the bottom trim level so that's pretty cool four-way power adjustable passenger seat with the SL and platinum trim levels. You will get power lumbar adjustments for the SL trim level and up. Memory settings for the platinum trim level only. As far as finishes go, you will get a cloth finish for the S, SV, and SR trims. However, that will be swapped out for leather seating if you were to go with the SL that we have today or the platinum trim levels. As far as heated front seats go, that is going to come on the SL trim level and up. And seats are plenty comfortable, not the most comfortable I've ever felt, but certainly not the worst either. So they are pretty much as expected once again. Taking a look then at the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped for the SR trim level and up, and it will be heated for the SL and platinum trim levels. And that heated steering wheel button is actually located right where all the climate control information is in front of the shifter there, in case anybody was curious. It's very nice on these super cold days in Pennsylvania like today, kind of, kind of like today, I should say. Anyways, let's go ahead and make our way to this startup. Let me first start by showing you guys the key here. Essentially, all of your buttons are located on one side of the key. You do have your Nissan logo at the very top. Lock, unlock the button to pop the rear hatch. That little circular button below the Nissan logo, that is going to be remote start, which believe it or not, comes standard for every single trim level across the board. That is pretty darn cool. That means you can heat up the Altima in super cold days, so it's all warmed up for you by the time you actually get inside. But it is also a push button start for all trim levels. So all I'm going to do, simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button, which is located directly in front of the shifter there. And so once started up, tachometer is all the way to your left, speedometer is to your right. There is a fairly large digital display 
front and center to control what is on that digital display. There are steering wheel mounted controls located on the left side of the steering wheel. It will give you plenty of information up there. There is actually a digital speedometer if you wanted to go that route. There's your average miles per gallon at any given time. There's also your trip A, trip B. That's expected radio settings, safety information, and really the list goes on. So quite a bit you can certainly check out on the digital portion of those gauges if you wanted to. But now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality. There will be a power moonroof coming with the SL trim level and up auto dimming rear view mirror for the platinum trim level only. You will get home light controls if you were to go with that platinum trim level as well. Dual zone climate control for the SL trim level and the platinum. Also kind of like, I know this is going to sound weird, but I like this fake wood trim that is surrounding the infotainment screen just above the passenger side glove box. It is certainly not real wood, but it does look like real wood and it is a pretty cool look to it. So I do like that. Also like the gloss black finishes around the cup holders as well. A lot of times manufacturers will leave that a boring matte gray plastic. So I like that Nissan finish that with a smooth gloss black finish. I do like that as well. Just in front of the shifter, you have a USB charging port, phone charging port, auxiliary port, and 12 volt power outlet, and a little rubberized storage area where you can perhaps store your cell phone up there. To the right of the shifter, you of course do have your cup holders. Behind the shifter, you have an electromechanical parking brake as well and within the center armrest there is a decent amount of storage in there as well but overall interior quality is pretty much as expected you also have an overhead sunglass holder found on the roof of this one as well and like i said it's pretty much as expected for this segment there but now let's go ahead and make our way to the tech display on this one seven inch color touchscreen display coming with the s trim level only Every other trim level for the Altima though is going to give you an 8 inch color touchscreen display. Either way you get Bluetooth and audio streaming, but you do need the 8 inch color touchscreen display to get Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. So that's a big one because that means if you have a smartphone, simply just hook it up to the Altima and you have free navigation through that smartphone. Also the ability to like and dislike your Pandora songs and there's a couple other compatible apps up there as well. If you wanted a factory navigation system, you're going to get that with the SL and Platinum trim levels. And of course you can adjust your radio settings up there as well. And by the way, when it comes to the sound system, there are two different sound systems that come with the Altima. The first one is going to belong to the S. S, S, V, and S, R trims. That is going to be a six speaker sound system. However, if you were to go with the S, L, or Platinum, you're going to get a nine speaker Bose sound system. And that, of course, then is the one we have today. So having said that, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. <laughs> serious, serious bass on this thing. That was that was pretty crazy. Definitely enough of a sound system for the Altima without a doubt. The bass again on that Bose sound system was nuts. Anyways, last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that tech display is of course, when you do put the Altima in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so first thing I wanted to mention is the Nissan Altima is an IIHS top safety pick. So that is always a very good start to begin with there. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard driver and passenger knee airbags as well. In the back, you're going to have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard across the board, adaptive cruise control, forward collision warning, automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection, lane departure warning system, lane keep assist, and automatic high beams as well. That is certainly a good bit. Then if you were to go with the SV trim level and up, you will get in addition to that a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, reverse automatic braking, and rear parking sensors then as well. And so when it comes to my final thoughts here of the 2021 Nissan Altima, I absolutely love that all wheel drive is available on this one. I really wish every single sedan made out there comes with that optional all-wheel drive system you know we don't all live in florida some of us do live in pennsylvania and other northern states where we do get some snow from time to time so all-wheel drive is definitely peace of mind there i love that the altima has that the turbocharged four cylinder is definitely a nice option i really wish it would have come with an available all-wheel drive system though having said that that is a lot of power that's going to be sent to the front wheels i can imagine there is going to be some slipping with that one although i didn't test it today also would have liked to have seen in the altima wireless phone charge Charger, digital gauges would be nice, multicolor ambient lighting. These things, a lot of the competition are 
starting to come out with. So they are definitely some nice features that I think sedans should come with these days as well. Tough competition out there, having said that. The, the Honda Accord is definitely quite nice, although it doesn't come with all-wheel drive. Toyota Camry, of course, is the super reliable pick, although Conserver Reports did rate this one very well as well, and that one also comes with all-wheel drive. Hyundai Sonata, perhaps, is going to give you the best bang for your buck with things like that wireless phone charger, digital gauges, ambient lighting, panoramic moonroof, but that one does not come with all-wheel drive once again, so that is where the Altima really pulls ahead. So overall, if I were to sum this one up, if you were looking for all-wheel drive, this is definitely one you're going to want to check out not only because of the stellar reliability really if you're looking for all-wheel drive it would be between this one and the Camry in my personal opinion you can also get it with the Kia K5 and that is some really stellar looks I will say that but the fit and finish isn't quite as good as the Camry and Altima I will say that but let me know what you guys think of the Altima in the comments section below that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold